me tell you just a tiny little bit about myself because I have only 20 minutes, so we don't want to waste your time. Uh, my name is Shirat Goldstein. I'm from Israel. I'm 35 years old. I have four kids. I have 10 years experience in uh, Joomla, web design, uh, web development, project, uh, project managing. Um, I am seven years using Joomla, three years part of the marketing team and managing the Joomla Israel user group in Israel, two years managing a development project that is called Cheat Codes in Israel. So I'm in charge of the website, of the courses. I'm running, I'm managing the development team that is doing that. Um, and one is, uh, my God, I'm a religious Jew, as you can see. And uh, this is my family. And this baby you've been seeing for the past few days uh, running around. So I'm trying to fit 20 secrets about Joomla. Uh, part of them you'll know, part of them I am hope uh, I'm going to discover, that you're going to discover new things. So first, uh, a few quick tricks. Drag and drop images. Did you know that it's possible to do that? Who knows that it's possible to do that? Okay, so for the people who don't, <laughs> let's open an article so that we can see everything. Yeah, we have a multilingual. Uh... Sorry, where's my homepage? Let's try. Let's see what I have. Downloads. Let's take an image. I was working on. Might be familiar from uh, our social media. And? Oh, sorry, the file is too large. Okay, let's not waste out of that. Do you understand? We can just take and drag it into. Can you take many pictures? Sorry? Can you take many photos at the same time? Um, yes, as far as I know. I tried it uh, last week and it happened and it did. It worked. Yeah. Uh, here, let's try two smaller ones. And of course, it <laughs> I ruined everything. Okay, let's go back. That is always happening when you try something a few minutes ago, <laughs> and then you try it on, on stage, and it doesn't happen. Sorry? No, you can't upload the same photo twice. That's still a, a problem with Joomla and. Uh, You'll have to go to the menu manager, delete it, and upload it again. Um, OK, next. Um, hide menu items. Uh, how do you hide menu items today? How many of you have on your website this huge, big um, menu that says hidden items? Yeah? A lot of you? OK. Menus. Let's go to uh, Africa. Who cares? <laughs> uh, this is for later. A menu. Let's do search. Let's write hello. That's known in all languages. And link type. And display menu, no. OK. Website, Africa, and we don't have it. If we go back, and display it, and main menu, hello, okay? No more hidden menus, big lists. You can just put your menus wherever you need them under the structure you would want them. You would have the URL at the end in the appropriate way, but you can just hide them from the menu and not show them. Okay, next. No follow, no index. That's an easy, easy one. When I'm developing a website, it uh, took me a few years to discover that it's taking me, I don't know, two, three months to develop a website. By the time the, the website is already developed, if I'm using the client's uh, uh, domain and uh, URL, or even if I'm not, I'm going into Google and all of a sudden I can see all my development uh, websites in, in, uh, in action in Google. 
So just use no follow, no index for whoever doesn't know how to do that. Google configuration. Under here, robots, no index, no follow. Just please remember to put it back on when the site is going live, because that's also happened to a client of mine, not, to, not a website of mine. She just didn't understand for like months why her website is not going on Google. It was a simple <coughs> configuration. Change the out of service message. How many of you thought of doing that? When you go and Again, global configurations. And you have the site offline, and you go, yeah, let's go offline. You have used custom message, okay? So we are able to change it for a very, very long time. Uh, with multilingual, we can actually use site language default, and then we'll have to go to, oh, I deleted it a few minutes ago. I'll add the code to wherever I'll add all the codes at the end of the session. Um, so we can just use uh, extension, language, overrides, and choose the right language and change the, the code of it to be uh, what we want. Uh, I would also go and use uh, overrides, layouts, and change and put the logo of the client and do some interesting stuff with that later. Search your website. Uh, if you have a website and you don't have a search on top of it, or maybe you configured the search to do some other things, um, then you can just take this code, which I will share again later, add it at the end of your website on the front end. Yeah, this is a Hebrew website, okay, sorry, English. We'll actually understand what you, we're doing. What does it go to Hebrew? Um, never mind, that's the search. <laughs> I have only 20 minutes. A uh, few slick tricks. Um, how many of you try to remove Virtumart from a website, from maybe a template website, and found out that when you go to the database, you still have all the data of which I'm out on your website, wasting uh, energy and time. Um, so first of all, after you try to remove what virtual out, did it with a few clients, was very, very annoying. Tried to go to Hikashop, but I still had all the tables there. So obviously removing the tables. Uh, it seems like that was some, the next thing was fixed here, um, but um, at all the version of virtual mat, if you would go to extensions and you would open it, you will still find the extension over here. So to remove it from here and at the update, because after all of that, I still have every few weeks an update from virtual mat saying, please update your virtual mat. So um, update sites, there's a list. I will also give a link to it at one point, um, so to delete it also from here. This was something I was struggling for a few weeks until I figured this out. Associations, do you know what associations are? Yeah, uh, whoever uses multilingual websites will find it very hard to manage its uh, content uh, throughout the website. So something new with Joomla 3.7, if I'm not mistaken, is that we have associations. We can go into menus and actually say that uh, this article is associated and then give it, um, yeah. Well, that's not the right one. associate it and give it exactly the right page that will work with uh, this page. Then when we did that, you can do that also with modules. You can go to multilingual associations. What's going on? We're supposed to be here. Not working right now, of course. I checked it. I'm sorry. I just I tried to uninstall uh, Virtual Mat before and accidentally removed all the website that I was working on. 
So um, I built it again, but some things were taking off. Okay, let's continue. Uh, find the hiding module. I think this is something like everyone knows, but at least, but sometimes I still have clients uh, or new users in Joomla that uh, don't know how to do it. TP1, yeah. Why doesn't it work? Sorry, one second. Templates, styles, options, enable, and close. And now you can see all your modules that um, at, one, at one of the versions of Joomla, uh, it, they took it to the options and out of the templates themselves. Um, okay, next thing. Retrieving your password. So I asked somebody before, and they said that they don't really know what to do when that happens. So let's check that. Localhost, no, sorry, PHP my admin, go into your database, go into SQL, find how do you retrieve your website, your uh, password? All of you know how to use docs? At the end, you have the code. You go over there. You change the right. Um, <coughs> what's going on? Okay, I don't have time to show it. But you change over here. And over here, the name of your table, you go go, and then you have a new user that is called administrator2 with this password of, of a secret. Go in, change the password, <laughs> delete the user, and you have your password back. Layout overrides. So layout overrides, we have also on docs, a whole new, a whole, uh, not new, a whole uh, set of information about it. Not something that I'm gonna go into depth. But uh, I wanna tell you that having layout overrides uh, can work uh, instead of having, a, Sometimes, instead of having a CCK, because I don't have CCK in any of my websites. I work with layout override. I override almost anything from the menu to modules to uh, the articles themselves, add layout as many as I need, and I have a perfect website for my client. And then some more. Um, so some of the things I'm gonna say now, from now on, uh, Brian Tiemann, uh, already said them on the uh, Achieving Magic uh, session in Joomla Day UK. I will show you later how to get there. Um, so I'm not gonna show you the code, but if somebody wants the code, I'll give you my email at the end of the session and you can send it to me and I will send you the, the code. But the idea is that sometimes we don't think about the small things. When a client is supposed to put in images to all, intro images to all of his items, and otherwise the layout is gonna look broken if an image is not gonna be there, but clients, you can't really trust them. So if you will add to them default, yes, a default image for each category, so you know that even if they didn't put in an, Im an intro image, they would have it in the structure, they would have it in the layout, and it will all look really, really nice. Uh, same with printer-friendly pages. Uh, I don't know uh, who of you needed to use it, but I had like two or three projects lately in the last year that we needed to use uh, printer-friendly pages. So um, again, docs, yeah? So it shows you exactly how to add the logo into your page and how to insert exactly the, the things you would want to be in the page because not everything on the page should go on a printed page. Yeah, so this is something that needs to be, uh, that you need to think about. 
uh, when you design a website for your client. Uh, where is the title hiding? This is something that uh, usually uh, clients struggle with more than developers. Um, I don't know how many of you are more developers and how many are designers, but for the people who hopefully will be watching uh, at home, sorry. Um, there's a few things, you, there are a few places where you can say, here is my title. So sometimes you will go into a page and you will find that you have like two or three sets of titles, or you just can't hide the title for some reason. You're trying it through the article and it's not working. You're trying it through the um, options, default options, and it's not working. You're trying it through the category, still not working. So the last place to look would be in the menu. Uh, let's look. So if we'll go in and we'll choose a single, a single article. And we'll go to options. You can see all the options and you can see that you have, again, show a title. And then if you have categories, you would have options for the, for the article itself, options for the category itself, and you have the same options also over here and also over here. So if you couldn't hide the, the title over here, look for it in different places. Um, that's what happened when clients go in and try to change things themselves. So instead of using global, they will use something specific, and then they don't understand what they did wrong. Uh, this we did, this we did. Create your own custom 404 page. Hmm, I'm sorry, I didn't open it. Uh, one second. Again, docs. Also something that I know, even as a designer, that we just forget to think about during the process of building a website, especially when we choose a template and the template doesn't have a 404 error page that is nice. Um, this is where, if you were in my presentation on Friday, I said spice it up a bit. So this would be a place to spice it up. Put a cute image, put a nice microcopy text and uh, make something nice. So if people do get the 404 pages, then at least they will have something nice to look at. And they won't feel as nervous when they don't know what happened to the website. Uh, some backend magic. How much time do I have? Duke was supposed to tell me after 10 minutes. No one? Okay, I'll just. <laughs> I'm just gonna continue. <laughs> okay, so backend menu. And you think in Joomla 3.8, I think, maybe 3.7. Uh, did you know that you can add more menus? So um, this is something that Brian uh, mentioned on his Achieving Magic, and I thought that this is wonderful, and why didn't we think about that before? Instead of having all this system and users and menus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, let's just take those menus and take off anything that this specific client doesn't need, and instead of confusing them, let's use new menus, and if we go into extensions, um, so first of all, the basics. If we go into manage, we can add a new menu, and we can say that it's gonna be in the administrator. We already have a menu like that. If we'll go to administrator, and we have a try menu. And when I open it, and I wanna add, you can see everything from the administrator point of view that we can add to our clients. So we should be very, very, um, careful and think about our client, its needs, what he would actually use. Remove anything we don't want, like updates. We don't really want the end user to do updates by themselves. And just uh, add the simple stuff. Create image, uh, sorry, create article, create category, if at all create category ne is needed for the specific client. Uh, basic stuff, um, how to manage images, et cetera, et cetera, and, uh, and that's it. And then we go into Extensions, you can see that throughout the, the whole uh, presentation, there's the administrator menu, it does not contain menu manager and module manager and component uh, container. So um, if I'll turn on the menu recovery, I'll see what exactly I need from here. And I'll be able to add them to my menu and this is going to go away. But if I go into modules,
um, in the administrator and I will search for menus. Yes. No, no, no. Where's the menu? Administrator menu, sorry. Yeah, so I have two admin menus right now. If I'll remove this admin menu, I won't be able to do anything on my website. But the right thing would do is to go in and change the access and make um, a special user group for uh, my administrators for the website and just let them access this one and not this one. And here, just change it to super users. And that's it. Next. So continuing with that, we would try and put on our backend only what the user needs. We'll use the ACL built in Joomla, and we'll just make sure that we're giving the specific users only the ability to see what they need to do on the website and remove anything that we don't want them to do. Uh, the same thing with modu backend modules. This is also from the Achieving Magic of Brian. If we go into modules, you saw we, a minute ago we added the admin menu. So like the admin menu, we can use uh, any module. We can decide to show uh, latest articles. So they'll be able to go into the latest articles that they wrote, because we could go in and just um, say author, edit or modified by me. That would be the user that is inside. And there's many more ideas like that that we can put for our clients. Again, so it will be easy for them to access what they need. Uh, that's back in modules. Why am I going back? Tiny MCE. Did you know that we can now uh, change Tiny MCE and remove anything that is not needed? Like, go to, sorry, now I forgot where it is. Uh, plugins, of course. So here we can use, uh, we, we can add new sets. Uh, I can see the button right now, but we can do that for sure. And we can decide which uh, user group is getting which, um, which set. And we have set two, set one, set zero. And we can just add and delete some stuff. So let's say I want to, the administrator of the website, the one who's creating articles, I wouldn't really want him to be able to highlight anything because it's just going to make the website ugly. Uh, he doesn't really ne need um, coding because if you'll get some of the user, if they'll get to this point, they'll just break the website. And there's a lot of other things over here that are really not needed and we should just take them away from the... Yeah. So even if we have this, which is a very, very, very simple, I would still remove some stuff from here and uh, let the kind have the simplest as, uh, uh, as you can have. Create templates for your content. This is something that I'm going to uh, send you to watch Brian's uh, presentation and take it from there. That is something really, really interesting that I don't know why I haven't heard about it before, but if you can create a template for your clients and take off from the actual create article, anything that they don't need and leave there only the things they need. More than that, change the text, the texting mm -hmm. that right now are more for Joomla developers and put it for the end users, right? Um, like uh, add here an intro image, yeah? Or don't use this button or stuff like that. Again, we're going to make our end user's life much, much, much easier and um, be able to give them the opportunity to actually manage the website in a way that they're not going to break it, they're going to be less frustrated, and they're going to come back to us for the things that they actually need and not try to do things by themselves and break the whole website. After that, go back to the basics. Use as much core as you can. We have a wonderful system. Um, really for the past few, the only extensions that I use are like Akiba Backup um, and um, 
I'm trying to think which is it, sliders maybe, stuff like that. Uh, but most of the things I would just use layout override. The only thing is that we have now a website that is um, game manager, which, okay, extensions like that you can't find in the core, so these would be the extensions that I would actually go and uh, buy if there was something like that in the market. So that's uh, my 20 secrets, and uh, thank you. It's not how easy Joomla is to use, it's how easy we make it to use, which is, again, by Brian. Um, thank you all.